So I've been playing about with this. This is the B-Link EQ-R6. It's a mini PC here with a Ryzen 5 and 24 gigabytes of RAM. I've been getting quite frustrated with my big PC and I'm wondering if I can actually make this a better place for video editing for a 4K workflow. So I spent a lot of time editing videos and although my desktop PC is great, it does have an i9, but that i9 is now six generations old. And the only thing, when I benchmark this EQR6, which is only a 300 pound PC, remember, against the desktop PC, the only thing that was doing better than it was the graphics card. So on every other benchmark, <laughs> this newer Ryzen 5 chip was doing better than my desktop PC. So I'm wondering if by fitting an extra SSD, because I've only got half a terabyte of SSD storage in there, if I can fit a two terabyte SSD to this, give myself a bit more extra room, can it actually beat my bigger PC for that editing workflow? I'm interested just to get it open and have a look inside. And it is gonna be an issue because I will fill up even two terabytes pretty quickly with the amount of footage that I shoot. It's all in like 4K and uh, high quality from my big camera. <laughs> so it does take up a lot of storage, but this will be considerably faster than the larger drives that I have in the desktop PC. So that sheer size of volumes is gonna be difficult to match. I've been looking at, there's a Kickstarter called a Falcon Prime A2, I think, where they've actually got space for eight NVMe SSD M2 drives. And I figure actually that might be a better place for me. And it's a really good price as well. So I've decided to back that. And I wonder if even that can handle an 8K workflow because that does have a 4070 and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So this little device here with 24 gigabytes of RAM and fast storage, maybe that will be good enough to actually punch through some 4K footage. So I'm gonna edit this video and one other on this computer once I have actually fitted that. So wish me luck. I'm not such a technical person. I'm not always opening computers and uh, fitting them. So I'm gonna enjoy myself just by um, getting this open and have a look inside. And hopefully, you know, if you're interested in this PC or B-Link and generally this form factor, hopefully this will be useful content for you. It has been a bit of a journey getting that SSD to work in there. I bought a WD black drive, which is NVMe, and I put that in and it just didn't recognize it at all. So I presumed I read on some forums that the B-Link only has an NVMe drive for the boot drive and a SATA drive for the second drive. So I bought a SATA M2 drive. So yes, that was really easy to do, but unfortunately it didn't work. It's well-known brand to the rescue. And yeah, so I've got a one terabyte SATA to go in instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that now. It's a little bit disappointing because I'm getting now less confident in this being a good editing machine because SATA is considerably slower than NVMe. I actually didn't know that there were two options of drive protocols for M2. I just thought M2 was M2. So my mistake certainly was easy to get into this thing. The little pointless rubber feet notwithstanding, I guess they're just there to hide the screws so it looks a bit more of a tidy job. People who are never going to open these things up. The boot M2 is actually beneath this whole unit, whole little cooling unit. And I believe to get the boot M2 out, you would need to remove this small board for the IO. But to actually just replace the M2, it is just three screws and lift off the little heat sink for the second M2. And then just the one that the screw that's pinning it down. The NVMe drives go up to 5,000. 150, about 5,000 megabits per second, but the SATA drive only goes up to about 500. So it is about a tenth of the speed, which that isn't much faster than the hard drive that I have in the big computer. So fingers crossed, this is all sorted. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put this two terabyte one into my big computer eventually, which should probably just speed the whole thing up and it'll give me a good comparison there as well. And the one that's in the big computer now, I'm gonna pop into this little M2 Caddy from Ugreen. So that's my plan anyway. My fastest storage solutions. I have a moment of truth now. Fingers crossed, this is all working. This next dock is absolutely perfect for playing with things like this. 
Although I didn't seem to be able to get it just to run off one USB-C, so I'm not convinced that that is actually sort of display port or can carry a video signal. Bit of a moment of truth now, let's have a look. And that didn't work either, so I, I was ready to give up really, and SATA speeds were never going to be satisfactory anyway. They weren't gonna be much faster than an ordinary SSD. So I thought, well, last thing to try was to take the one out of my big PC. I've just got one terabyte drive in there and put that into the B-Link. Although that's NVMe and that did work. On this side, this is a built-in power supply unit. So that's the thing that actually on your laptop, for instance, is on the cable. So that's a nice thing to see about these, that actually they can just go straight into a little mains kettle lead because the power supply unit is actually built in. Given you can still get it in this tiny little package, and that power supply is built into it. It's quite a feat, really. So I've no idea why. It's definitely compatible with up to two terabytes. It's got a one terabyte in it now. And that's been brilliant. It's worked really fast and it's edited really well. It's hardly skipped a beat, honestly, in that 4K workflow that I've been doing. I edited the Remarkable 2 versus Remarkable Pro video that I've just released in the last couple of days, all on this PC, and it worked really well. And this is a, well, actually, you can get it right now for sub $300, this PC. You know, that's a really good value and a really high performing PC for something that small. So a couple of things that I did notice getting this set up, it seems the front USB-C can't export video, certainly can't drive this next dock. So I've got to have the next dock with an HDMI for video, USB for power, and then another USB cable to actually communicate the keyboard and mouse to the PC, but that's all working fine. And also the signal kind of disconnected when I took, I took something out of a USB-A port at the back that actually interrupted a file transfer so that was a bit annoying so there's no reason i could see why those two controllers were linked but they seem to be within the pc removing one did temporarily stop the other one working and just to say that two of the usb a ports are terribly slow so they must be like 2.0 i guess just for your keyboard and mouse really the one at the front and the one on its own at the back but the two usb a's on the far right that are together they're fast enough so that's fine the only time that i felt this did sort of start to stutter was when i loaded up photoshop at the same time as doing an encoding. So I was running Media Encoder and Photoshop and looking for some screenshots within Premiere. Now I do this regularly on my larger PC, but the larger PC has 64 gigabytes of RAM. So what I was seeing was the bottleneck with that workflow was actually the 24 gigabytes of RAM weren't quite enough. But this is an office PC and you wouldn't be buying this really for this workflow that I'm doing. I'm just showing you that it's quite incredible that you can. And when those two things were loaded up independently, they all worked fine. Once the encoding was done, then everything else worked fine as well. The encoding was really taxing on the graphics card as well, but generally during scrubbing through that 4K footage and working and editing that file, it was really quite snappy, snarting and stopping the footage at any point. There's sometimes three layers of 4K footage playing simultaneously, rendering at full resolution, although I'm not looking at it full resolution, and the graphics card and the processor managed all that just fine. It's not that I use a lot of 3D graphics and everything like that, which really does require a beefy graphics card. So I need to go back to the big PC and run editing off the two terabyte SSD that I put on the motherboard now in there and see how that goes. The desktop has been doing fine, but I've actually backed a Kickstarter called Falco Prime A2 and their concept is a, well, it's a Ryzen 9 and it does have separate graphics card, 4070, and I spec'd it up with 64 gigabytes of RAM. But the big feature for me is they've actually put SSD slots on the front of the machine. So you can actually slide them out independently without having to open up the machine. And my thoughts are, well, if it's working that much better with super fast storage, what I can do is just buy two terabytes at a time, load up, and by the time I've gone through all of those eight bays for SSDs, then I should be able to go back to the first one and scrub that out, put that on some slow storage somewhere and start again. I'll put a link to that Kickstarter in the description as well, just in case you're interested. That does look like a really interesting concept, either for a creative PC or maybe just for some network storage. I'm amazed by what you can do with these mini PCs.